on. Guys, we're bringing it back. It's been a while. It's uh, the totally original, uh, fine, fine segment. I call it uh, excuse my take or excuse the interruption. I've got what I call it, but we have five spicy topics here, and we're going to try to get our points across in about just one minute. We're going to go back and forth on these, I think. I forgot how we're doing, but it's brought to you by the Dodgers Nation app. Download it on the iOS and Android store. It's a great app to get all of your Dodgers news and, and notes and, and stats. The stats there are great. So let's dive right into it. We see first over there, we got October Phil, Phil Bickford. Don't look now, but Phil has been pretty decent of late. Nine scoreless outing, uh, nine scoreless outings unscored upon in 14 of his last 16 games. He had back to, like a uh, two game stretch late August, back to back outings, three runs, two earned runs. Is he going to find a way with all these other injured guys and everybody, you know, we got, we got trying and we got bruised. Art. Is Phil somehow creeping his way back into the playoff, uh, a bullpen picture go. Well, first I will say that if this was asked two weeks ago, I would say the answer is absolutely no, but the way he has picked it up of late, he has pitched better. I definitely think there is a slim chance at this point. You just mentioned his numbers. To me, the issue with him is the home run ball. He's served up nine dingers this season in 57 and two thirds innings pitch. Hasn't allowed one since August 22nd, but really what it comes down to, it's a numbers game and you got 13 pitchers and you got the starters, you got the bullpen pieces. And I just think there's some guys that are at ahead of him right now and it really comes down to the guys that are currently injured if they come back healthy is he in front of a Yancey Almonte the answer is no is he in front of a Blake Trina the answer is no is he in front of a Tommy Canely at this point who's on the fringe I yeah. mean the answer is probably no for sure but we'll see will all these guys that are currently injured come back and stay healthy because if they don't he's going to be right there but uh, it's just a numbers game and I think that the Dodgers might not trust him in that spot but uh, I would say no as of right now it's a good take it's a fire take <laughs> fire take <laughs> we're gonna have more on the uh on the bullpen coming this coming week uh i think we're getting together on wednesday to talk more dodger baseball so stay tuned for that what you got next so, so next we're going we about we're gonna back and forth this yeah right? absolutely okay, yeah perfect. so the next one is about Tony Gonsolin, and it's about who is Tony Gonsolin, the most important injured Dodger that's due back. Do you, do you want to push the clock now? Yeah. What's the question? Is Tony Gonsolin the most important <laughs> Dodger? I know. I'm just oh, messing yeah. with you. Uh, at this point, yeah, because with the bullpen, you have a countless, it feels like a countless amount of arms that can either... Uh, or sorry, in the rotation, or no, 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 yeah, in the bullpen, you have a bunch of arms that can either fill into to spots or, or they're going to find a way to string together out. So you're not going to see Craig Kimbrell going out there and closing every game in the ninth. It's going to be very, very ex excessively matchup based, and that's the way it should be. You need length out of your starting rotation. You need Tony, a guy who was, I mean, by some accounts, the ace of the first half of the season. You know, he's an all-star for the first time. A very important piece. You need him to not necessarily go out there and give you seven innings, six innings, even five innings, but to be out there, open games, give you three or four, and and provide a little bit of bridge and length. I mean, if you're able to go Julio, Tony, and then Kershaw instead of Julio, or uh, Julio Kershaw, just, it feels that much better to give you some length. So I do think Tony Gonsolin is probably the most important injured pitcher to come back yeah and a little update on tony gonsley he threw a bullpen today yep. about 30 pitches doc said that the velocity was up and for me i agree with you 100 percent on that because you're talking about a guy an all-star pitcher who's really had a breakthrough year a 210 era a guy that can give you multiple innings blake trinan is a guy that when he does come back hopefully he stays back but he's still mm -hmm. going to be limited to some capacity i don't think you're going to see him pitch on back-to-back -back games i don't think you'll see him throw multiple innings so i think in the right spot for tony gonsley as an opener maybe you see four innings 75 pitches mm -hmm. I do think that he's going to be massive and I am still though concerned that he'll find it I mean to me I, I lose sleep <laughs> every night thinking about Tony Gonsolin just I'm just going to be honest with you it really stresses me out and I think <laughs> I was playing, but it really stresses me out. And I just think that he's going to really go a long way into really putting this whole starting rotation puzzle together for sure for sure all right I'm going to give you your, your runway here 
You wanted to talk about Justin Turner. Give Justin Turner some love. Rightfully so. We're going to give you the full runaway. I'll, I'll note, I was the guy who earlier in the season said the one thing that's going to save Justin Turner is the juiced ball coming back. Well, I don't know if they brought the juiced ball back, but he brought something back. Last 58 games, so since the middle of June, June 19th, 362 OPS over 1,000 for the old guy. Tell people why they need to love uh, Justin Turner here in this uh, old, old age 37 season and why they should be excited for him. Why should we be excited for him in October? Well, first of all, put some respect on the future manager of the Dodgers name. Ooh. JT, what he's been able to do this season, turning his season around. And hey, he, JT is an HT. He is a huge threat. And Joe Musgrove really sparked something in him. And if you look at his numbers, in the second half of the season, a 996 OPS, a 178 WRC+, plus, 15 doubles. And I think that he's in a great position where he's not relied upon to be a guy at the top of the order like we've seen in postseasons past. I mean, go look up at his numbers. This guy pretty much holds every single Dodgers postseason record. But he's down there in the order. He's going to be able to get some key hits hit yep. with those bat-to-ball skills. And last season, in the postseason, he went 4 for 30 hit 118 he did hit that big bomb in the wild card game but that wasn't Justin Turner this is the Justin Turner we know and love and I think that he's gonna have a big impact for the Dodgers I think that he's gonna be that guy who just comes up and gets you that big hit like I said he's 37 but he's taking care of himself he's like 25 with shipping handling so JT we'll put some respect on all washed King's name we're not doing very good at hitting our countdown uh, timer here you know I'm just saying I'm, I'm, I'm actually doing both better than both. I thought I would. You are. I will give you yeah. that. You know, yeah. cl clap for the man. There's, there's an applause button somewhere on there. I think it's a, uh, it says applause on it. On my post game, that's wait. just me getting started. We're gonna, we're gonna wait. There it is. We found the button. Thanks, shout out to Noah. Product no, shout familiarization. Out to the producer, Noah. <laughs> doing the damn thing. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Our final topic here, our second to final. I forgot what it is. Yeah, yeah. Our, our second to last topic here in uh, what am I calling this again? Excuse my take. Excuse yeah. the interruption. Excuse the interruption. There it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's money. This is the one where you asked me. Oh yeah. So, <laughs> so I tried to buy you time. So Dustin May. We talked about him. I know little, him. Yeah. You know him, D May. Yeah. yeah. Dustin Mania coming. Uh, Red October on the way. Is Dustin May, in your opinion, Mr. Clint Pasias, baseball savant, baseball expert? Is Dustin May? <laughs> Ready for the postseason. He's as ready as it's gonna be. That's it. That's my take. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think having the back to back bad starts, having the worst start essentially of his career where he didn't come out injured, because that's a bad start. Having those was a big time learning curve, a learning process for him. It was important for him, plus to, you know, uh, have Kershaw come up and throw his arm around him in that situation i think it was bad at the right time for the greater good of a red october of him getting a, a ring he could be a little more proud of than that 20 ring because we all know how doug does not a fan of the 2020 championship but not i true. think i think he's i think he's proven himself i think he's proven himself i don't think he's going to be he's not your game one starter but for the role he needs to play 100 percent legitness that's it he's, he's gonna be legitness and he's gonna be getting some big outs for these dodgers I'm waiting for the, there it is i was waiting for it nicely in done. october because i wanted to make sure i went over the timer you're like that smart kid who finishes the test 30 minutes before everyone and everyone's trying to i've been known to finish early <laughs> hey <laughs> final topic here guys who is your final position player making this postseason roster we know there's pretty much sorry as a position i said that the position player we know there's a whole bunch of headache to the, the bullpen, to the pitching staff. Position player is one thing. There's a battle between two dudes. Who's your guy go? So for me, we know who was brought up, and that was Miguel Vargas, and his purpose was really to spell guys down the stretch, give JT, Muncy, even Freddie Freeman a day off, has that positional versatility. We saw what he was able to do in his first game, hit a double in the gap up in San Francisco. So really, it's a question of Hanser Alberto versus Miguel Vargas. And so far in September, Hanser's two for 14. And if you look at Miguel Vargas, he's one for 16. So I think there was a universe where if... 
Miggy, Miggy, Miggy came up and he set the world on fire and he was just tearing the cover off the ball. Maybe you say, hey, this guy has the potential to be a better bat than Hanser Alberto. Maybe use him in a big spot. But this isn't a team that pinch hits a lot. There's not a team that pinch hits and uses that. And I just think Miguel Vargas, it's going to be Hanser Alberto. Because look, Hanser Alberto, not only can he hit, He's going to get the final save. He's going to get the save in the Dodgers World Series clinching win. He is the <laughs> Shohei Otani of the National League. So I'm going hands to the answer. Which is the right answer. It's the right answer. Maybe I he mean, hasn't done enough. Yeah, and if you look this at point. this, Clint, I mean, you're talking about, like we talked about earlier, that when Gavin Lux went down with that injury and they didn't elect to bring up an Edwin Rios, they didn't even give him a cup of coffee, not even a sip of coffee. They didn't even look, let him look at any coffee, and he was leading the Dodgers in home runs when he went down. And then James, yeah. you can't get him out, man. A guy that he's hit for more cycles than a laundry, a laundry mat in one week. They don't even give him his shot. <laughs> And I think that told you right there that this <laughs> roster is set. And Miguel Vargas was more about getting him experience. And also, Hanser Alberto, look, when Mookie Betts says that you're a catalyst, that you're important to that clubhouse, you are on that postseason roster, okay? We know this is Mookie's franchise at this point, along with Kirsch. And, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's 100% Hanser Alberto. Yeah, that's right, Call. I mean, he's meant so much for this team. Um, and even he's, he's not going to play. I mean, <sighs> You know what I really do love about uh, about this team and about this roster right now is that pretty much one through seven, it's going to be exact same day in and day out. That's cool. You really you have two question marks in the lineup. Four dudes going to fill in two spots in the roster each day, and it's really probably going to be left field, some rotation there. I don't know. Dave and the front office have a lot to figure out because, you know, Chris Taylor has been there. He's done that before. I know I'm going off on a tangent here, but has he has he earned it this year? Kind of not, but also, you know, injuries and all that kind of stuff. You can't really take it away from him. Let's 